Hey everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to another review. This is of Red Hood and the Outlaws number four. Now, generally I tell you that I believe, you know, a background that hasn't been used is a waste. Well, not necessarily in this case. Because we have Black Mask here. Bizarro coming out of his mouth. Artemis going in his mouth, I believe, to kill him. And Jason Todd, who wants to shoot him in the forehead, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, there is something going on with the cover. Now, as to why I'm not perturbed by the cover, well, you have Black Mask, whose, whose mask is a shade of black, again, and you have it against white. So think of good versus evil, light against dark. They always contrast each other. And colors that contrast set each other apart. Set, set each other apart, the, and at the same time they complement each other. Just like the, just like the red with the white. Red is a, a color that means power. Well, that's one of its meanings, anyway. And what does Black Mask want? He wants power. He wants control. So this is a good cover. I believe, anyway. So let's get into issue number four. It starts off with uh, Jason Todd narrating. He says, I tried to bond with this Bizarro. Now, I wonder why the author said this Bizarro. How many bizarros has there been, actually? Anyway, get him to understand he doesn't have to be something he's not, which is Superman. You can see how well that worked out. <laughs> and you see how bizarros, you know, literally got him in a grip of a hug. And, Art, and he says, and Jason says, don't offer to help or anything red I've got this you know in his own way saying that he would like some help and Artemis looking so beautiful and yes I'm I do mean that the she was drawn so beautiful she says want to know the sad thing you're actually doing a lot better than I expected which, of course, means Artemis never had high expectations for Jason in anything. This is Dark Trinity, Part 4, Team Dynamics. Yep. Over here, Jason Todd is continuing on with his tale, saying, This mess started... When my bright idea of infiltrating Black Mask, this started when he had the bright idea of infiltrating Black Mask Criminal Empire. One bad guy working for another bad guy. Sounds like it, you know, what's the worst that could really happen, you know? And then over here, we see Bizarro. Sent so, and I and I love to read Red Hood and the Outlaws because of Bizarro. Because I love to to do a Bizarro voice. Too many words. Bizarro am confused. And then he punches Jason against the wall again, against the glass, where there is Artemis imprisoned. And he goes oof, oof. And then this, this, all this is so funny. I mean, I, I, I love this. Artemis says, it sounds like you're saying, you were right, Artemis. We should have dispatched this clone while it was still in its cyber womb. I agree, Red Hood. <laughs> she's, more, she, she's more blunt than Wonder Woman. 
That's Artemis, the closest thing I have to a partner in this. This is her version of being supportive. I tell myself it's because she has a cover to maintain. I get that. And over here we see Bizarro body slam Jason. Red him and red her. You am rude. Bam! Slams him down on the ground. That, that should break his back. And over here, Artemis says, I've been posing as a prisoner here for days. Red Hood's cra crazy if he thinks I'm going to throw all that away to pull his fat head out of the fire. Then she reaches for her axe. She whispers to me, mistress, because that's what she calls her axe, mistress. Bizarro no like when you talk about him like me not here. And Jason says, dude, you do that all the... Never mind. One battle axe of the gods coming up. Wait! Jason says, because she is ready to destroy the glass and, you know, bring down some major hurt on Bizarro. But Jason knows what she's about to do and can, and I guess he maybe saw her out of the corner of his eye. But he has an idea. Here goes Nada. And if you don't know what that word means, it's like nothing, zero, zilch. And you have to love the artwork in this comic book. In this entire series, really. I mean, look at the, at the detail. And then the detail of Bizarro. Anyway, Jason says, you don't want to talk to me, no problem, so talk to your friend here, pup pup, because that's what he calls the doll, pup pup, when he was watching all those new newsreels of Superman, he saw the up up and away, so he calls him pup pup, yeah, pup pup, Jason says. Tell him why you're so mad. Mad? Me not mad. Me am sad. Everyone thought me am Superman, but me am not. Me am Bizarro. Me am alone. And that's kind of, that's sort of heartbreaking when you th think about it. I know, it's just a comic book. But it, it's Bizarro owning up to what he's feeling. Yes, he's a clone of Superman, a very bad clone, but he's owning up to what's inside of him. You're not alone, Bizarro, Jason says. I'm your friend. And what did you call her? Red her. She's a friend, too. Go on, say hello. Hello, Red her. Yeah, um, hi. Now, this is uh, something that I've been wondering about. I'm not sure how close I can get this in. But I was wondering, does Artemis wear high heels? Because the way she stands, I mean, she almost gives off, gives off that impression. But I was, in this instance, in this panel right here. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Look at her right foot. That looks like a heel. Or maybe I'm wrong. 
Maybe I'm mistaken, but it looks like her back heel is a little bit off the ground, like she's wearing a, a heel. But she's a warrior, so would it really be pertinent for her to wear, you know, boots that had high heels? You know, just a little something to think about. Will you sit with us, Jason says. And Artemis thinks, I hate to admit it, but what he lacks tremendously in skill he makes up for with instinct. <laughs> and just look at the face. Look at her face. It's one of those times when you just don't want to admit something that, that you know is true. You know is accurate. And so at the same time, Black Mask is watching all this. What do we do, boss? One of them says, kill it. The other one says, no, not yet. Let's see how this plays out. So he's watching. And they're keeping their guns trained on Jason and Bizarro. And for some odd reason, Artemis is looking over this way. I, th I thought they were looking through a one-way mirror, but maybe they're not. I mean, two-way mirror. That's why I'm a two-way mirror. Looks l like Pup Pup is tired. It's been a long day. Bizarro am tired, too. And he, and J Jason thinking to himself... I can feel Black Mask's eyes on me. He is waiting for me to screw this up. Is he waiting for me to screw this up? Or is he genuinely counting on me to fix this for him? After all, he did enlist me as his number two, the would-be heir to his criminal empire. And so over, back, back over here, Jason continues his narration, saying, Can't focus on that right now. Have to remember every trick I've learned in every therapy session I had in Arkham. So I guess he was locked up at one point in Arkham. What did Dr. Quinzel... Oh, we know who Dr. Quinzel is. It, she rarely gets called that. What did Dr. Quinzel say? If you can't talk to me, talk to the wall, a pillow, anything. So, he's, do, he's using that with Bizarro. You're in a place called Gotham City. This is your new home, Jason says. And up here, this looks like uh, some of the Bat... Maybe, maybe that's not the Bat family. Maybe that's just, you know, random people. Listen to the... Oh, yeah, he... He, he says, listen to the city on the other side of the walls. Because he previously asked him, which I've passed over, you know... Listen, what do you hear? And he says, yeah, your, your heart? The cars racing to, to places people don't want to go. The ambulances racing from horror to hope. Listen to the people shouting and laughing and loving and fighting and giving birth and taking lives. Listen for the heartbeat. Among the chaos of Gotham City, like I did when I was a kid, and slept on the sidewalk on more than one night. There is a world out there in this one city. Can you hear it? It's like he's putting Bizarro to sleep. And he did. 
City am pretty. And Bizarro is out like a light. And Jason just says, yeah, sometimes. And Artemis is just sitting there listening to this, so surprised. And so is Black Mask. He says, diffused, without a shot fired. Impressive. Let's wrap the creature up and get it back to the lab, gentlemen. Now this part is is kind of, well, it doesn't add a lot to this the story. I mean, to, to me, basically, it's just Black Mask gloating about his empire and everything to Jason Todd. And he says, uh, I think I'm and he, he sort of commends him, saying, like, you risked your life to protect my assets. And that was not the original plan of Jason. But because Black Mask is distracted, Artemis can go and escape. Uh, and he even thanked Jason for, uh, you know, handling Artemis somewhere in here. But this is basically a breakfast sa scene. Yeah. Yeah. Black Mask says, I'd like to show you something. Sure, can I bring this bagel with, he says. <laughs> and Artemis thinks, in Banana McDowell, which is where she comes from, if you had a problem with someone, you'd pick up a sword and run them through. In man's world, people go on and on about their feelings. She says, so tedious. I've taken advantage of Bizarro's ice rampage, obliterating the monitors in the cell, so for the moment I can move freely and track down the bow of Ra. But please! You know, this is a little flashback. You can't kill me! I'm a U.S. Senator! Do Senators bounce? <laughs> Gotham City! Your precious artifact is on its way there. You would be more respectful if you understood the power. You you would be more respectful if you understood the power you have sold for pittance. If I can't find it, I'm coming back. And we'll put that bounce theory to the test. Wait up, please. Not a chance. I'm be I've been searching for nearly... Three years, I could not wait a moment longer. It made sense it would be here. The bow is certainly something this black mask would seek to acquire, but there is no ignoring the truth. I cannot sense her presence nearby. It is my fault she is missing, but I fear it is the world that will pay the price for my mistake. And I love how she jumps down. And I would say she's probably not wearing heels because if she were, then you could see her left foot arched a bit when she landed. And so they walk down this hall and Black Mask admits that it used to be his home when he was growing up. And he says, my apologies for the aesthetics. Much of this building's electricity has been redirected after 
Bizarro's outburst. Then uh, talks about the painting of his folks. When I was born, my parents were obscenely wealthy. Instead of uh, of raising me there, they gave all their attention to the family empire. Yeah, not a lot of domestic bliss rating off that portrait. They were a crushing disappointment. And Jason says, where are they now? Blackman says, you witnessed firsthand what I did to my men when they failed me. What do you think happened to my parents? Another difference between you and me, Red. I see a problem, I fix it. I don't spend the rest of my life regretting what I didn't do or what others didn't do for me. <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's a good statement, really. Because you can't rely on others to accomplish anything for you. And so he shows Jason this whole armory of weapons. And Jason gets him to talk about the Bow of Ra. And saying, so then Artemis was right. The Bow of Ra is on one of these shelves somewhere. And Black Mask admits that it's not, that he had, that he did possess it, but that he sold it, but, but that's actually, he sh shipped it back to its original home about a week ago. And then Artemis hears that, and you can see the shock on her face. And so, I guess Jason knew she was listening, because down here it said. Down here you can see, see Jason's th saying, Good luck, Artemis. And then he keeps on talking to Black Mask. They keep talking about the criminal empire. And uh, he's, Jason says to, says, so then what are you planning to do with your own private armory? Which is exactly what he's been showing to Jason. We. What are we going to do? Don't tell me you haven't wondered what Gotham would be like without the Jokers, the Mad Hatters, the Two Faces. Just imagine what we could do together for this city. We only need to be bold enough to exert our will. And then he says that he had the same conversation with Batman once upon a time. And Batman didn't agree. And Jason says, do you really believe that's possible? He says, for me, for, for men of ambition such as ourselves, anything is within our grasp. And then he starts talking... About something else, I mean, which, uh, of course, Black Mask knows quite a bit about, apparently. Is it? Jason says, what the hell is that? I believe you already know the answer. This is the same techno-organic virus I use to control the mayor. And then he says, control I lost during the assassination, quote, attempt. Or are we still going to pretend we haven't been working at cross purposes since before we met? And Jason. And then he, he goes into shock. How long have you known? Always. Did you think it was a coincidence my man tried to enlist you that night in the bar? That I blew up Ma Gunn's home in order to lead you to my doorstep. So in other words, Black Mask is going on and on about how he's done everything to bring Jason Todd into his fold. And he says, at long last, thank you for your honesty. Oh, I forgot what it was he said. Um... He says, uh, even when I might agree with your vision of a city without crime, on account of you being a part of the problem, not to mention out of your mind, it's a pass. Because 
you know, he Black Mask wants to reshape the image, the city into his image, and he says, "At long last, thank you for your honesty. It makes this much easier. We could have done some good together, you and me." He says. We could have rebuilt Gotham in a way that she deserves. I don't know why that Gotham City was referred to as a she. Or, you know, or even why it would be referred to as a gender at all. You know, it's a city. Made it safe for the deserving among us. Oh, like there's not everyone there is deserving to live there? And what happens when they want something you don't, when they disappoint you? You already handled that particular problem for me, Jason. What the hell are you talking about, he says. You brought him to me. You showed me his worth. Smash! You gave me the means to rule this city with an iron Fist. Da -da -da -da! Me and my Bizarro. So now Bizarro is totally whacked, whacked out of his gourd more than he was before. Next issue, Black Friday. So that was Red Hood and the Outlaws, number four. For those that crave action in comic books, there wasn't any in this one, but it was still a good story because each bit of dialogue kept me in suspense of what might happen next. Was Black Mask going to actually murder Jason? Or was he going to execute Artemis? I, you, you, it's something like you can't, you can't predict. And that's what makes a good story, when you can't predict what's going to happen next. I would recommend Red Hood and the Outlaws number four to anyone who loves a good story and isn't hung up on always seeing action or seeing somebody get beat, beaten up, even though that's very, very entertaining. I'm Michael for Spirit Kongs. If you enjoyed this review, please do leave a like and share it with someone that that would enjoy it. Also, subscribe if you are not already subscribed to my channel. And smash that bell like She-Hulk if you haven't already. So you can be notified of all future uploads. Till next time, true readers.